going into our first game of Orzhov Evil, the one thing I wanted to mention is that I took out the Yagmoth while offering because I thought about it a bit and the only like the only thing that allows me to cast it is Elspeth and uh, I don't think that's enough. I mean Ulamong it does allow me to cast it but Ulamong is 12 mana. I don't think I'm gonna get, ever get it. Uh, I mean 10 mana and then not even win. I think Ulamong is gonna be enough to just win the game on his own. I really like my hand because it's, I have removal turn 2, removal turn 3. I really like that so I think we're gonna keep. And then Slender Mare can be there to help us uh, like take over the game. Jet Presence is a very good card. I mean, it does 4 mana, we don't have the mana yet, but I do believe that we're gonna draw to it. Worst case, we just cycle the Slender Mare for a land drop. So I'm not worried at all, I think we're in a very good position. And the opponent, of course, is the opposite Stadia to make everything I cast more expensive. And I don't think I like that, so we're just gonna change his edict. This opponent, yes, please sacrifice a creature. Yes, opponent, you. Alright, that's good. So please draw a land, then we can Elspeth next turn, protect Elspeth. Alright, 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 Elspeth on turn 4. Death presence, death presence would have also been an option. But what I'm setting up for is draw a, sw a swamp, play death presence, play a swamp, kill whatever he plays. That's like what I'm trying to set up for. And that's something I'm very excited about. If you ever get death presence uh, lifelink with Slendermare, what we do is that uh, Jeff Presence now gains us 2 life uh, because of his ability and then he gains us 2 life because it says Jeff Presence deals 2 damage to any target and since he has life think he's gonna gain us the life again so like that's a, that's a super cool combo that I hope uh, works definitely if the tension to take our Elspeth really opponent I mean we're gonna get it back so like technically he just set back our Elspeth he set our Elspeth back to original loyalty so like I need to thank you opponent thank you for like setting my Elspeth back to original loyalty I really appreciate that and we're gonna take a look at the time next turn and have perfect information from that point. Alright, so deck is performing pretty well actually. I mean, opponent is down to 18, opponent has two creatures in graveyard. I'm gonna take her and get rid of one of his one of his uh, creatures or like spells next turn. So I'm feeling good, I'm feeling very good. We have a board wipe in case we ever need it, but I don't think that we will. The only problem currently is that I'm not drawing lands, so like please deck, can you give me lands? We actually have two board wipes, I was wrong. <laughs> I mean, I think it's a bit late for Ritual of Soot, but I, but like, besides that, I think we're good. I love how I'm trying to cast Ulamog, but at the same time, I'm not even getting to my fifth land job. I mean, what the hell, like... What I would have considered was Deputy of Detention, uh, uh, the tokens, but like, that's not something that happened with my opponent. Alright, so we... Alright, alright, so Planet Cleansing is definitely something I'm gonna play around the Talpa 2. Alright, if one ever gets to Zetalpa, I think the game is just over. Yeah, I think the game is literally just over. He can plan on cleansing next turn, but I think we just take the Elspeth currently. Because, like, Essence Scatter is annoying, but I mean, he doesn't have the mana for it yet. And I think Elspeth is just going to... Just getting rid of the escape clause on Elspeth because this does exile it. Alright, it makes him discard, but he's gonna exile it next turn because of the ability of the Elspeth Nightmare itself. Like, if you top deck slam, it's gonna be very annoying. Because he gets to get rid of this, and then when he gets rid of this, um, the ability of exiling the graveyard goes away. So I think what I do is I try, start trying to apply more damage, so we're just going to play our death presence. And I think I can draw cards at this stage, I don't think I need to deal damage and then gain life, I think we're good. Alright, Temple Describe feels good. I think I apply maximum pressure as, as much as possible, so let's continue applying pressure. Alright, so opponent, please don't top deck a land and then planner cleansing. Please don't top deck a land and then planner cleansing. Again, opponent, like for the last time, please don't talk like. Alright, yes, opponent doesn't talk like a land with Planner Cleansing. Um, a land would have been a very good pickup because uh, Death Presence would have been uh, lethal to that uh, Daxos. Sadly, that doesn't happen. Do we get rid of our Elspeth? And then we use it to um, get plus 2 plus 1 to all, two creatures. I think that's a fine route. I think I'm gonna temple first just to gain some kind of information for the future. Dawn of Hope. Oof. Dawn of Hope could be very good on a board. Uh, after you planner cleansing, I'm, after you use planner cleansing, I mean, I'm gonna make sure to play Dawn of Hope. Um, I think I'm gonna cycle my Splendor Mare just to give something lifelink. I think I'm gonna get the Death Presence lifelink to set up for the future plan I have in mind. I'm not gonna play Dawn of Hope because I know about planner cleansing. And I think I'm gonna just give one of two of my creatures plus two plus one uh, the jet presence mainly just because I want to keep applying pressure, like force opponent to do something. Alright, we just attack. 
And I think we're fine. I think we're really fine. Gwen is gonna be taking uh, five, and then he's taking eight, and then he's gonna be left with uh, things. He's just, if he's gonna board up, he's gonna tap out. So I can safely resolve uh, any of my spells. So Dawn of Hope probably resolves, and then we set it up for the turn after. Gwen still doesn't draw his land, and he has mana up. I mean, I'm worried about his mana being up. But besides that, I think I'm cool. Play a land, attack for lethal. Opponent, do you have anything? Alright, opponent does have something, doesn't he? He's gonna bounce something back. Settle the wreckage. Alright, Settle does ramp us for Ulamog, so like, I mean, I'm sad, but not that sad. I mean, maybe I should have played around Settle and not attacked with the Dark Presence, but I mean, forgive me, this is a new format. If I didn't play, if I played around the Settle, I mean, uh, Dread Presence would have been lethal just because I would get back the, I would get swamps. And then because I'm getting swamps, uh, I can literally just kill the opponent that way. I mean, that's, that's a sad turn of events. I'm gonna play the Ram Cove Giant to force him to do something about it. Because forcing him to do something about it ensures that I can resolve Ulamog safely with no planner cleansing, just in case anything happens. Alright, so he does planner cleansing, in my opinion. It's funny how Chainer's Edict just gets rid of the, <laughs> of the Zatalpa. Alright, opponent, can you deal with an Ulamog? Uh, I'm gonna exile your blue sources. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alright, so opponent, what can he do against an Ulamog? I believe the answer is nothing, so we're just gonna extend. Alright, uh, next turn. I mean, opponent, you can go ahead. <laughs> Alright, opponent, what can you do against a resolved Ulamog? Exactly, nothing. <laughs> and with that, let's get into game two. Alright, let's do this. I'm really, I'm really happy about this deck and just getting to resolve Ulamog. Even if we lose all of our next games, I'm just super super happy that we just got the resolve in Ulamog. Yes, I did not play around Settle. We're gonna start playing around Settle now. That's a lesson you learn, and then you always learn by failing in magic. And now after after this game, whenever I see four mana up in at least this cube, I'm gonna play around Settle. You know, I'm not gonna play around Settle in arena, I mean in standard of course, because it's not there. Um let's see, let's see, let's see. We currently do not have access to any white source, but just having access to bag of holding ensures that I can get there. And then we have so many good cards that I think I'm I think I can risk this keep just because we have our bag of holding. I think I'm gonna keep definitely being second. I'm sure to draw some lands. Uh, hello to you two opponents. All right, uh, ten mana the card is not something I wanted to see when I don't have lands, but we can just switch it to bag of holding and then return it with bag of holding when we actually have the mana to cast it. Fiend artisan, that's super cool. They, we're gonna kill it anyways, but that's super cool. So I think we just play our planes and then we pass. Good luck, opponent. Uh, we have so many ways to deal with Fiend that it's not really scaring me. I mean, yes, it is a good card, it's a very good threat, but I don't think it's really bothering me. Uh, I mean, Elspeth can just be used to uh, deal with like a bunch of things. Alright, this is definitely annoying, because like opponent's gonna get to draw some cards, but I think it's not like a black sword, we just kill it on our turn in case opponent is running some kind of dive down type protection. Alright, Knight of the Ewan Legion is also annoying, I'm really digging for that war dive with our Rank of Giant. So please get us into a black source, please black source, or a banishing light does work too. I think we don't need an Ulamong at this stage, so like bye bye Ulamong, I will miss you, I'm really sorry, I'm really really sorry Ulamong. Um, we're gonna play our caves, okay, and then we're gonna play our banishing light, and then we're gonna take care of these two permanents, and that's super good. Now what's funny is that if uh, banishing light gets uh, dealt with, what happens is that opponent gets back two things. Like, I don't think, I don't know if the card from Theros that says target opponent sacrifices an enchantment is in the game. Alright, the opponent is playing uh, Esper. Alright, cool, cool. I mean, my board drop is not really making me scared of this board state because I can just board drop and deal with it. Now, question is, do we play Elspeth or do we set up for a board wipe? I think we just play Elspeth and then kind of force him to attack her. If he does attack her, I'm just gonna block and then I'm like, fine. Alright. I mean, just having access to a board wipe, I see manipulator. You're that type of person, opponent. Alright. <laughs> Alright, we do have access to a board wipe, but I don't think I'm, any, I'm in any position to force me to do that, so I think we're just going to continue our plan. I think we just uh, leave mana up for murder strider in case opponent is gonna try to um, activate the knight to kill off our Elspeth. I think that's a decent plan, and then we can also draw cards with bag of holding, so I think that's the wisest option currently. So I think we're gonna go with that. Alright, opponent, if you want to deal with that Elspeth, I mean, go ahead, you can go for it. I don't mind. I kind of want him to extend a bit more because just him extending a bit more it makes this even more valuable. I mean, currently it's a, a 2 for 1, but I want it to be a 3 for 1 or more. I mean, yes, I'm an evil control player that cares about 
uh, card advantage. So I'm sorry about that. I mean, I'm really sorry about that. But that's how I'm. That's how my thought process goes. All right. So opponent is considering his options. Is he considering removing my creatures and then attacking the Aspect down? I really hope he is. Because like, if he does attack, I think I just block the knight. Um, God Eternal Bond 2. Now that's making me wish that I already. Worked, but I mean, no, not not really. I think opponent is just gonna draw. I think he's gonna sacrifice this card. And then just draw from the rest. Is that the case opponent? Or maybe the IC because it's not gonna do anything currently. Alright, he sacrifices two tokens. So I think I just wait for the board wipe as I mentioned, and I don't think board wiping one two is that good just because he can get back at any stage. That's annoying, I'm not to say the least, I mean. I'm gonna swift and the knight of the Ebon Legion, because like I don't like him. I mean the sooner he gets dealt with the better. And I think he's gonna run out spawn of me, I'm not sure. So I think we're gonna bag of holding because like it does the same thing. Uh, no, not the four man ability. Obviously, I think we're just gonna bag of holding, get into our thunder mare. Um, all right, we don't need our thunder mare. I mean, I could have cycled it, but it does the exact same thing, and I like uh, using the bag to make me feel good about picking it up. Um, do we temple just this cry? I think we can go for that trout. So let's just temple. Yeah, assembling skeleton is not exactly what we need at this stage, although, yeah, I don't think it's what we need at this stage, there's no although. Yeah, we play our spawn of mayhem, and now even if spawn of mayhem dies, or like, I mean, even if spawn of mayhem is tapped down forever with the IC, what happens is that spawn of mayhem deals damage uh, regardless, so that's good with me. Alright, bond 2 is very annoying, don't get me wrong, but I think we're gonna be able to survive that bond 2 madness. Alright, IC already taps down our uh, spawn of mayhem, and I'm very sad about that. Very sad about that. Alright, opponent has access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana. I'm actually quite curious about what he might have. Do we attack? Do we block? That's a good question. I think we don't because we have so much lifelink. Apparently, we have the murderous rider for the future. I think we don't attack and then we try to apply pressure our way. So, like, I think I'm fine with the, with the attack. Is opponent gonna board wipe? Demon Lord does not well. Alright, opponent has, actually has a very good curve. Takes one, he plays his plague crafter. Is this enough for me to board wipe? I think it's it might be, it really might be. Dawn of Hope make a token block for the next couple of turns sounds also like a good plan. And opponent, are you going to tap us down with the IC? Do we just board wipe now? That's the question. Do I want to take six from the bells and dock? I think we don't, so we attack and then we board wipe. So like opponent, do you want to do anything? I mean board wiping does give him a bond to in the next couple of turns, but I mean is he going to activate it? I really don't know the answer to that question. I mean not activate, is he going to sacrifice a bunch of things? So we cannot ask him that question. Alright, so we're just gonna uh, cast off all of this. Of course, giant get rid of Bazen Dog. Goodbye Bazen Dog. This does deal with our Elspeth, but I mean, yeah, maybe we should have activated the Elspeth, but no, this says if I can't, I discard the card, so I don't want to discard anything. Although my hand is empty, yeah, I think I should have just activated the Elspeth to pump uh, our creatures, hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me. Play of Wishes, search for anything outside the game. <laughs> this is actually happening. Let's see, what does the opponent search for? That's actually a super cool concept, yeah, and... Helm of the Host being in the sideboard is not actually that bad, just because we get to search for it with uh, what was its name, the uh, Mastermind's Acquisition. So opponent searches for this, so creatures he controlled ha have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste, and protection from black and red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, he can cast it. Alright, that's a super cool turn of events for my opponent. I think what I go for currently is the Murderous Rider. And then unstep activate Dawn of Hope and then try, yes I do mean try to like get uh, over this whole IC manipulator thing. And uh, currently I think I want to play my Triumph to set up the future turns where I can activate Dawn of Hope multiple times. Do I think we're behind? Yes. Do I think we're gonna get out of it? Uh, also yes. Alright so he taps down our uh, murder starter with IC and then sadly, sadly whatever we sacrifice the Plague Crafter he can't tap down next for next turn. But I think this turn is gonna be just him setting up a Chroma's Memorial, so like, yeah, so definitely that. Uh, we can return, how many lands do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, so at any stage where I have uh, access to 10 mana, I'm just gonna activate this Bag of Holding to get back Ulamog, cast Ulamog, exile two things. 
and then give Ulamog a uh, lifelink and I think that should be enough to get pretty ahead in this game. I mean, I don't know why he's thinking that much about attacking with the Fae, I mean, it has... Your Fae has Vigilance. I mean, your Fae has every single keyword in existence. Alright, maybe he's thinking of keeping it back for the... For the blocking something with lifelink so I don't get to draw two cards, but I mean, yeah, that is a thing. But like, if I activate Elspeth, give them, give one, give it plus two plus one. That way, I get to do it anyways, and then I just gain a bunch of blood. Yeah, I think he should have attacked at that stage. I highly think he should have attacked at that stage. All right, now we're just going to attack, and then we're gonna set up the Ulamog turn. All right, so opponent uh, passed the first strike damage. That's fine with me. All right, so we're gonna gain a bunch of life. We're gonna go back up to a huge life total. This has protection from black, so we're not gonna gain life from this. I'm gonna pay two mana to draw a card because I like drawing cards, obviously. Swamp might seem like a bad pickup, but the fact that it's uh, ensuring that Ulamong enters the battlefield next turn is good with me. Maybe I should have not played the giant, but I think I wanna start applying some pressure because opponent has simply so much on the field that I'm not happy about it. I mean, Bantu is gonna have now a vigilance, and a menace creature with vigilance is very, very annoying. So actually, maybe the right choice would have been to actually get back Ulamong and then set up for it next turn. So maybe that was a wrong play from my part, but I want to believe that it wasn't. So like, forgive me. But yes, I do believe it was a bad, was a bad play. I think I should have set up Ulamog. Alright, so Art attack on our giant. Sadly, our giant dies. And I think Fae of Wishes is gonna attack at this stage. I mean, there's literally no reason for you not to attack. It has Vigilance. Vigilance means this creature does not have to attack. So like, he's considering whether to get it back into his hand. Staggering insight to give it lifelink. All right, that's that could be annoying, but I mean we could exile it with Ulamog anyways. A, a creature with vigilance and lifelink is gonna get annoying, especially that it also draws cards. But I mean, could I could I have really expected staggering insight? Maybe I should have. He's really considering just bouncing it to search for something, or he's he's highlighting my bag of healing. Uh, folding. I mean, no, please don't have a way to deal with it. Please don't have a way to deal with it. If he has a way to deal with it, Ulamong is just gone. I'm pretty sure he does because he's looking at it. Yeah, I think the misplay was playing the giant instead of uh, getting back Ulamong and then setting it up for next turn. Yeah, I think that was a big misplay. I think I shouldn't have uh, done that, but I mean... See how I learned to play around Settle? I, now I'm gonna know that if I have Ulamong against, uh, under the bag, we just get Ulamong always. So, like... You learn every day as a magic player. I mean, opponent, what are you thinking about? Please, like, let it be a way for me to actually have my uh, bag of holding survive. Please don't, please don't have a way to deal with it. Please don't have a way to deal. With it. I really think he does. Just that, I mean, maybe he can tap it down forever with icy. All right, so it survives. Which I'm very curious about. I mean, I'm really confused. Now Golden Egg here is gonna get the shrine because we ha also have Dawn of Hope in our hand now which now means that I mean in our field which now means I can activate it to uh, draw some cards Does this ensure that I have the... sadly if I play this and then on the stack opponent that's down our bag of holding we just get to lose it so maybe that's not something I wanna go for uh, What do we have access to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 I think we're gonna have to play the land anyways just so we can uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 activate bag of holding and then 1, 2, 3, 4 use golden act to gain life and then draw a card with dawn of hope I'm sorry Jeff presence and I don't think I'm gonna attack because my attack is just gonna get eaten by the fae and that's not simply something that's valuable in my opinion I think we're just gonna be able to golden egg uh, dawn of hope I think that's the better option so maybe he forces the issue now with the IC Manipulator and then if he has a discard spell I'm very very uh, punished for my play last turn but I mean how could I have known Dawn of Hope activated alright so we're just gonna do this now just to get rid of it let's count our mana carefully this is 4 mana I have access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so we can definitely go for that route so we're just gonna sacrifice our egg to gain some life and then we're gonna pay two to Dawn of Hope to gain, to draw a card. All right, Elspeth conquers death. They deal with the uh, memorial or the bond too. I really like that. I super super like that. This says return all exiled cards to your hand. It doesn't say that I have to uh, discard my hand. So that feels super good. Ulamog next turn is insane. Sim simply simply insane. 
I'm not gonna exile the Fate of Wishes, obviously, because opponent can simply just pay two and then get rid of it. Bond to get rid of what opponent? What do you want to get rid of? If he's playing SS Scatter, I'm pretty punished. Since that, I think I'm fine. Because, like, if he does, I think I take two plus five next turn, that's seven. I'm down to. I don't think I'm dead, but, like, I'm quite behind, honestly. Alright, opponent is really digging for something, so maybe he does play as Scatter. I think he does play as Scatter. Like, what other reason would he sacrifice all of his board for? I don't think there's that many reasons for you to sacrifice all of your board. So, opponent, what's the plan? If he, I really hope he taps out. Him tapping out makes sure that I can get to resolve my things. So, opponent, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? So, alright, opponent does tap out, and I think that just means that my Ulamong is safe to resolve, and then next turn Ulamong can get lifelink, so like, that's also, that's also something we can do. Alright, so opponent attack, I can't even block the face, so I'm not gonna try. They have haste. They have haste. That's something I did not know. Uh, so we're gonna take six, and then, alright, we're not dead, but we're pretty close to being dead. Yep. So pass the first five damage. Yeah, Chroma's Memorial is actually pretty punishing, especially paired up with Lifelink. Uh, he gladly—I mean, I'm glad he didn't pick up a. He, I'm glad he didn't pick up a blue source because that would have meant that he could have activated the Fate of Wishes in response. We're now we're just gonna get back our Ulamog. And now we have to think carefully because he can IC twice, meaning that he can uh, block two of our things in the future. He, maybe he doesn't now just to like get rid of the trigger. But like he can tap down especially two of our things, so like I'm very careful about that. He's considering using the IC now, which is stupid in my opinion. Or he's maybe he's considering if I activate it. He's tapping down our lands to make it impossible for us to use our Ulamog. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think we simply can cast Ulamog anyways. 1, 2, 3. We have a ritual of soot, which the board wipes this and this. It has um, I mean, this is a very crucial turn. We can't cast Ulamog anymore. So now, I think we Elspeth conquers that the memorial, and then we play Spender Mage just as a blocker for the future. Yeah, I think that's the safest route. Or we can just Ritual of Soot. Though well, we're still dead to Ulamog. I don't think we can Ritual of Soot. Yeah, I think we just Elspeth conquers death. Yeah, Elspeth conquers death for the memorial. I could have uh, removed the wand to but I think I prefer getting rid of the uh, getting rid of the Fate of Wishes. And then I think we attack with the Murderous Rider to gain uh, 2 life. And then I think we Ward Wipe. Or maybe I should have played the Splendor Mirror. It should have also, it could have been also an option, but I mean, I didn't think about it. Should have also attacked with the Soldier because it has Lifening that was very stupid from my part. And forgive me guys, I think I'm just tilted because I didn't get to Ulamong and I'm not gonna get to Ulamong the turn after either, so like... You kind of get tilted when you don't get to use your Ulamong. This had that touch, so like... Anyways, this... Uh, I mean, that's, that's really what I wanted to happen because now I get to deal with the afterlife token, so that's good. I should have attacked with the 1-1, one -one. yes, I know, I know. I like, I agree with like what you're saying currently and then you're tilting probably. You can ask that next turn to gain life. So like I'm not that worried about my life total. If one doesn't go crazy now, I think we're fine. And I don't think he can go that crazy with just uh, four cards in hand. I mean, for, I mean four lands in play. Did you really have Branky? All right, so we just got punished for uh, waiting a turn to cast Ulamog. I'm really sorry, guys. So I think we're gonna go for game three if I have enough more enough time. Yes, I should have. I didn't think opponent has a, had a haste threat after dealing with Akroma's memorial. I'm really sorry, but like I didn't think about it. And I think it's fine, I think it's really really fine. Even if I attacked with the 1-1, one, one, it wouldn't have really mattered. My Ulamog decks have sadly lost one game. But you always need to lose some games, you always need to lose some games. So with that we go into our uh, turn 3. I mean to our game 3, so let's do this, let's do this. And this time I'm gonna play more, more carefully, I, I promise, I really promise. So this is a very good hand. Uh, Removal spell into disruption spell into or like actually you could just play the executioner. I think I like this hand. I think I really like this hand. So if opponent isn't playing something super aggro, I think we just uh, stabilize. I think we're good. So hello opponent, let's give him the hello. Opponent doesn't like us, so no hello for us back. All right, he does give us a hello back. We're gonna play bag of holding because it's a very good spell to have. 
case opponent does nothing, we can simply just keep on using Chain Z deck, and I think that's super cool. Opponent doesn't even play anything for the second turn, so like I could memory leak, but I think activating Bag of Holding is cooler. Actually, I think I memory leak now just to like understand what the hell is happening. It's like, why aren't you playing anything, opponent? Can you like please show us your hand? Don't think anything in white has flush. He didn't play a one drop, he didn't play raise the alarm, he's not playing anything. So like what's exactly happening opponent? I think raise the alarm is the most annoying thing. Is because it carries two one ones making my e deck horrible. Also unbreakable formation is something that I need to look out for in the future. Besides so that, this removes activated abilities so executioner loses his abilities. I have to also look forward to that. I think we just take raise the alarm. I mean, why aren't you playing anything opponent? I'm super confused, like, what's the benefit of not playing anything when you have them? Like, maybe you now get the double spell, but like, that's not something I, I see as a benefit anyways. So, Chainer's Edict, opponent, please sacrifice your Sunwing. And I think we tried to dig for our board wipe, and beca just because opponent has uh, this stupid, uh, where is it, where is it, shot in the tower, I don't think, uh, I don't think the execution is gonna be as good. But maybe we use it to just, uh, maybe we keep it for a turn where you have the, the full mana up to use it, so I think maybe that's a plan. I think we just play our blood pass next turn, so we don't have another black source, so maybe I try to deck for that. So let's just draw a card and then discard, exile something under bag of holding. I think reassembling skeleton is simply just too slow at this stage, so we get rid of that. He's not in my graveyard, I think he's not, yeah, he's, he's exiled, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Splendor Mare, uh, Argyle's Blood Fast sounds like a very good turn, and then maybe he gets baited into using Trapped in the Tower on the, sp uh, on the Splendor Mare him himself, because he doesn't want me to keep on gaining life for the Blood Fast. So, or he can just stop it down, I don't think he's gonna get forced, he's gonna get forced to use trap on the Tower on it, but like, the, s the longer the game goes, the better for me anyway, so like, I think I'm fine. So what happens, opponent? What happens indeed? I think the fact that I, t I can use this in the future, alright, this changes a lot of things in the math. This changes a lot of things in the math. Uh, golden egg is cool, I guess. And he gets us to draw something. And then if we, did, if we get a board up, I think I just played Executioner because it creates two blockers and then it helps me stall for a bit. So, alright, so we do have the board wipes. I think I just tanked Executioner force him to activate his trap in the tower so he doesn't lose his marshal and then next turn I get to board wipe. He taps down the spender mirror but I still have two blockers opponent so like that's something you need to think about if you want to attack with your marshal. I think he will use his spell on the uh he will use his spell on the execution just because he doesn't want to lose his things. Is he going to Alright if that's the case I think I'm just gonna block the Benalish Marshal and I think I just take the rest of the damage. And then if he has currently 4 mana, meaning that, alright, he has now 5 mana, he does tap out, and then that means that our board life is simply just going to resolve very, very easily. Um, we have access to the mana, I think I'm just gonna blood fast now, just to like, kind of make him think that I'm digging for something, just so he plays around uh, maybe board archer or something. Baffling that for the future sounds good. Uh, yeah, I think we just attack. And then we board wipe. I think that sounds cool enough with me. This doesn't gain him any life. There's nothing on the field that gains him life. So like that's cool. I would have been dead next turn if I didn't top deck to shatter this guy. So like, see, this is what you do with magic. You top deck things. All right, so he double blocks my Spender Mare. Thank you, Spender Mare, for gaining us three life. You are really appreciated getting us back to 19. And now I just board wipe. Sorry, Actually, I'm not really sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry opponent, like seriously, I, I know how, how bad it feels to get board wiped. I mean if you remember I was telling you about how I used to play vampires and then I used to lose, I usually used, used to lose the board wipes. I'm really sorry opponent, don't give me that look, I, I kind of feel him just being sad and then like I feel bad currently because I made him sad. But, like at the same time opponent, you were like threatening to kill me next turn, so like is it really my fault? Uh, that's something to consider. Uh, Temple of Plenty is good, because we get this card for a black source. Ulamog. One, two, three. We were really far away from Ulamog. But I mean, it's Ulamog and our deck is made to cast him. 
like I think we keep it. And then like worst case we have the blood fast, we have the bag of holding to pitch him and then get him back later. So Elspeth make two blockers, and then we just pass. I am proud of my comrades. I am proud of you too, Elspeth. So if you're like wondering why I'm saying this, Elspeth said that she's proud of her comrades and I want her to feel appreciated. Planner Cleansing would be brutal currently, but I don't think someone who's playing uh, that many creatures would run Planner Cleansing anyways, so like, I think we're quite safe. So, uh, Argy's blood fast again, dig us into a black sword. That's not a black sword, but I think it's fine. Uh, we're gonna make more tokens with uh, Elspeth, and now we can just sacrifice our uh, golden egg and step to gain life, just in case we just want to gain more life for our future uh, Argy's blood fast, and that's super cool. Do I bag of holding now? I think we do, just because we didn't hit the land drop uh, quite yet, so like maybe we hit, that, uh, we hit it that way. We do hit a land drop. I think Elspeth's Nightmare is just too bad at this stage, just because... I mean, it could take care of Sutter the Wreckage in the future, but I don't think it's that good currently. And now we can uh, gain life with Golden Egg, and that's super cool. So opponent is still not playing anything, and now just because I have the Chainer's Edict, his, if he has a Zetalpa, his Zetalpa is just punished by Chainer's Edict. Do I want to gain life or do I want to draw cards? I think I just want to draw cards. Yeah, I like drawing cards as a magic player. If you're asking why, I, I play blue. I think that's enough information for you to know why I like, uh, why I like uh, drawing cards. Oh yeah, yeah, I thought this was 3 mana to gain life, so it's 2 mana, so never mind. Never mind, never mind. So we're just going to attack. Opponent, uh, we could have activated Elspeth, but I want to keep it as long as possible for opponent to uh, kind of have to deal with it. Alright, opponent doesn't uh, shot me but he's uh, settled the wreckage, that's weird. What, is he like waiting for me to do something before he settles? Maybe. So we're gonna blood fast. Kind of, I'm not digging for anything, but I just like drawing cards. Dread Presence is good. And now we get to Dread Presence, and then for every swamp we play, Dread Presence is just a free Argus blood fast activation. So like, opponent, uh, take two, I gain two. And then I could have just pay, made it so I draw a card and then lose one life, but I much prefer uh, activating the blood fast and then using this ability because it also deals damage to my opponent, which is better in my opinion. So we're just gonna blood fast again. Alright, opponent. Uh, I mean, banishing light is good because it deals with the trap in the tower for our Ulamog turn. Because yes, I am going to cast Ulamog very soon. If our opponent settles the wreckage now, I'm gonna cast Ulamog now. And I think Jack Presence is enough of a reason for him to settle the wreckage because he wants to get rid of this. So like, opponent, I'm attacking you for a huge amount of damage. Is that going to earn the settle the wreckage? I mean, opponent, I think it does deserve a settle because like, he's taking a lot, yeah? I mean, yes, I said I'm gonna play around it. And yes, I could have built the thing with like, just attacking with the tokens and then just uh, getting the swamps to win that way. But I'd much prefer uh, resolving Ulamog in this turn and then him thinking that trapped in the tower is gonna trap our Ulamog and then just me ending his dreams and then just <laughs> banishing light the trap in the tower. Yes, I am an evil person, I'm not gonna deny that. I mean, you already know about me, that about me, I play control, I'm a mean person. Because like, control players need to, uh, the first step in, of becoming a control player is giving your soul away. You're not giving it away to anyone because like, you care about resources, but you're like putting it aside. Maybe under the bag of holding. Alright, so opponent is considering his options. I mean, what could you have for 8 mana? I'm really curious about what opponent could have for 8 mana. I mean, is it trapping the tower for our Lorun Enforcer? Opponent, I'm very sorry, but like, uh, you're gonna meet an Ulamog next turn. So like, I think you're gonna regret your decision a bit. Like, just a bit. Ulamog! The ceaseless hunger. He's gonna float them in response. Is that it? Yeah, opponent, of course, you float them in response. If opponent has Seal Away, that's gonna be so funny. Because, like, Seal Away deals with Ulamog, and Seal Away is in, is in the format, so, like, Seal Away would be so funny. I'm not gonna even lie about that. But, like, he still exiles 20 cards, and yet he's literally down to 2 cards, meaning that Ulamog. Is gonna win me the game whether he connects or he doesn't connect, so like, I think I'm fine with that. Opponent, is there anything for like, uh... He giant, he kills my spawn of mayhem. Opponent, you're very mean. And let's just let Ulamog hit you for 10, and then exile all of your library. Ulamog is lethal, that's so f I found it very funny that Ulamog is just lethal whether I attack, or I mean whether I connect or not. I found that super amusing. 
So opponents, as you're gonna play this to kind of stop Conclave Tribunal, my Ulamog opponent. How dare you? How dare you Conclave Tribunal, my Ulamog? All right, that's a very sad uh, day in Ulamog town, but I mean we get them back next turn, so like I'm fine. A giant killer, giant killer. It would be funny if giant killer somehow killed Ulamog, but like I doubt it will. Um, we're gonna banishing light. Here, Conclave Tribunal. Yes, Ulamog is gonna come back to our field. Ulamog, that's just less hunger. We're gonna buff me and this giant killer just because I wanna keep Chainer's Edict up. In case opponent plays anything. And with that, I think we can do anything, so we're just going to path. I could have activated Elspeth and then just uh, escaped her again, but I don't need to do that, so like, why, why do it? Do you have another way to deal with Ulamog opponent? Opponent, you need to like stop dealing with Ulamog. You need to like take 10 or just exile all of your library and then I win anyways. So like opponent to reading Ulamog and that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna split the games into parts just be, so you don't get bored. So currently we are we're at 2 win, 1 loss because I did not uh, function properly. I'm, properly. I'm really sorry. But like with that, if you enjoyed the video, I do uh, recommend you subscribe because it helps the channel a lot. And with that, I'll see you guys next time.